backyard. The 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 backyard. Show you guys how to save some money with a shop made corner clampet jig. This one is fashioned after the commercial version from Rockler. Theirs is a great design, so I thought, why not make a shop made version? To get started, we're going to need a piece of wood. Off camera, I went ahead and cut this to size. It's 13 inches long by 7.5 inches wide. And also, I made a template. So, what you want to do to start is you want to cut the from the sides first because if you do it off the tops it won't give you as much surface to cut these bottom pieces so we cut one off of here like this set your saw to 45 degrees and we're just gonna make a cut <laughs> so that's one out of the way and then we'll just turn it to the opposite way, cut the top piece off. And you can see the reason is, is because if you cut these off first, you don't get as much bearing surface. So then we'll go here, get that lined up. And you can see why you can see why having the template really is nice. And then just uh, continue on around the board from there. There. And so that's the generalized shape. Uh, down here I just cut it out with a bandsaw. This is just a clearance area. So the next step uh, I did off camera is we need to glue up some uh, three quarter inch material into inch and a half material. Once you have your blocks cut from the table saw, they're an inch and three quarter tall and an inch and a half wide, you can take and flush them up to the back here but what I like to do is not just flush them up there but I also flush them up to this edge here and then I take and where I've made that center mark I sneak it out just so I can see the center mark and then that will let me know where to position it because I'm gonna be drilling a hole right here so once you've got your piece aligned and your center marked I flip it over like this and I take a pencil and I draw the angles and then I have my my two angles that I need and then what I like to do is mark bottom so that I know this is the bottom that's and that see how that just helped me line that back up I've got the shopsmith set up in drill press mode and uh, we're gonna be drilling our hole here and I've got a stop block set up so that we can just uh, repeat, well, there you go, repeat the drill on every one of these. So every block I grab, I can just stick it in here. Make sure the word bottom is against the fence. Now, the other reason you want to have it to the bottom against the fence is because that's where our, we're going to screw it to our um, clamp base. And that way, every one of them will be identical. Also, I've got it offset slightly so that I get a little better uh, portion of the screw onto the uh, right angle fixture of the clamp. So, so we're just going to slide it in like this. You can hold this with your hand. Um, it's kind of a small part drilling a big hole. So I just, uh, I kind of prefer to use a clamp. my two blocks with the holes drilled in them both of them mounted in my moxin vise here speaking of my moxin vise that's the reason I bought this uh, threading kit from Woodcraft uh, three or four years ago was to make one of these and it comes in really handy on my bench this uh, this kit is pretty much set right out of the box uh, if you 
do a lot of it you may have to sharpen a bit but so far I haven't had to sharpen anything and what's really nice is because the, how well it's made that inch and three-eighths hole it literally drops in and self squares the tap for me and now I can just go right down just with a little bit of pressure downward pressure I just start cutting the threads and then once you get all the way through you can either back it all the way out or you can just thread it all the way through then there's a little screw on top here you just unloosen slide your rod out and it comes out and just blow it out and just start threading it in I've got my dowel clamped up here in the vise and I want to show you the die portion of it basically it's an inch and a half clean hole here and then it goes to a cutter which then goes into metal threads that uh, chase the cutter and the cutter uh, makes it so that the, the dowel fits into these metal threads and then they in turn just let you keep threading it all the way down so this is how we thread we just set it down on there and then you just try and keep it as level as you can and that chamfer just helps that cutter get started and then we just start going down now when it comes to the the dowel itself poplar works pretty well but I've noticed that the poplar needs to be more of a green color and if it's green then it works really well at holding the threads nice and solid uh, the wider it is it seems like you get a little more breakout I'll just uh, go that far for now and you can just keep threading it all the way down which is what I would recommend is you thread a lot of the rod and then uh, what I do is I just keep this from the last time when I was making this vise itself and you can just make make a nut basically or a handle and you can uh, make your screw portion let me pull that out the green wood makes a really nice clean thread one of the things I do find that to make the thread work a little better is to just sand down the points a little bit with some sandpaper like that and it seems like the it, it, it's easier to turn in and out a lot which is what I did with my moxin vise and it it is just smooth as silk doesn't squeak either I see a lot of people's on on the internet um, on YouTube and stuff when they're turning their wood wood screws they're squeaking well if they sand down those points a little bit and lubricate it you get no squeak at all you can hear that I, I have zero squeak I use a little bit of wax and petroleum jelly and uh, I put that on occasionally I didn't put any on in the past probably six months and you can you can hear it is squeak free so that's a little wood thread tip for you next is I've got two pieces of plywood glued up into a block that's eight by eight uh, but we're gonna make an L out of this a right angle this will go this away and you won't go all the way through you'll make a stop about uh, probably about a half inch from your line that way uh, you can finish it off with a handsaw and it's two inches wide you'll see what I mean here in a moment once you got your right angle uh, cut with the table saw you're just going to finish it off with a uh, hand saw and now we have our right angle the key is you want to make sure that it's it's a perfect 90 there's one more thing you need to do with the miter saw and that is trim the back corner off of your uh, right angle piece because that will give you a little extra clearance for when two pieces are being joined together um, just in case the inside corner isn't dead perfect 
which it should be, but it may not be. This just gives you a little extra clearance. And I'm just taking off a quarter inch from the point. So you can just measure a quarter inch, set your saw to 45 degrees, and you're ready to go. Well, off camera I just went ahead and drilled my holes for my blocks. And uh, on the template, you're going to find that I've already pre-marked them for you. So you won't have to worry about uh, knowing where those are. So you drill those out, and then you just put some countersinks on the bottom. I'm going to be gluing this and uh, using wood screws to hold it. Once the glue sets, this thing will be solid. Cut these smaller blocks. I'm going to use my miter saw. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you can always use a hand saw. Um, all you need is simply to set your saw at 45 degrees. Uh, I'm using a clamp just to hold it to keep my hands away from it. And we're just going to come down with it. So that's how we do that. And then the small portion, you just flip it and cut it, you know, wherever you marked your line. for four, All the cuts are 45 degrees wherever you marked your line. So if this one is smaller, you may have to turn your saw this away. And then uh, you can still do the inside cut like this, but you'll turn, take my clamp and I'm going to put it to the back side here and the nice thing about the Hitachi is I have a laser which uh, makes it easy for me to line up my cuts especially on angles so once I see that I've got it make sure I've got clearance and I do And that's how you cut out your pieces and then I'm going to cut off some of this uh, angle point probably once I figure out the length. So all I did was take our screws and just put them into the blocks right here with some glue. Uh, just held it with a clamp in the center and uh, it lined up with all the edges so we just put it in there. And uh, if you got them in correctly you're, you should be able to basically get a right angle. Now as far as the right angle portion of it you can either apply it screws through the top down or like I'm gonna do to make it just look a little nicer I'm coming in from the bottom and I just went ahead and pre-drilled some screws. So next we're gonna just apply some glue. You just gotta pick which side you think looks best. I think this will be the bottom. Once it's covered, then you want to just take and uh, lay it onto your piece. Line up those two edges best you can. If it's not perfect, it'll still work. It just needs to be close. Because what's really making the difference is the right angle piece itself. So once you get it somewhat set, I'm going to put a clamp right here on the edge. Just till we can get a couple screws in it. One of the things I found out here, just uh, I was trying to do it with just clamps, but it just didn't work. So I had to take and shoot a couple brads in there to hold it even. It just worked out a whole lot better. So now we've got that, we can just shoot our screws in. I'm gonna drill some pilot holes first. Now that we've got our basic assembly finished, the next step is to take some threaded rod, cut it to four and a half inches long, and then just fashion some kind of handle that you can grip onto. Uh, I'm just using a piece of plywood. This is some more scrap. You just wanna drill a hole thread it just like we did the uh, other pieces and uh, just have a four and a half inch long piece of threaded rod 
and I'm just going to take some wood glue, put in here, screw this in, and then that will make a handle. And then I can just take a handsaw and cut this off, and then just kind of cut the corners off and round. So one of the things I thought about was, you know, I just put glue on this and threaded it on. Well, to make it more durable, I thought, well, I'll drill a quarter inch through hole through the handle and the dowel, and then I can just take a quarter inch dowel and drive that through with some glue. And I think that will make sure that this glue joint never breaks loose. Well, our clamp's finished. I think it's turned out really well. Let's test it and see how it does on a couple boards. Uh, just load it up. I guess I'll join this side, so I'll push it against that one. Slide this back now. I mean, look how easy and quick that is. Get these even, and done. <laughs> now I can fasten those together, and if I wanted, I could put a clamp on top if the, both the boards were even, and uh, clamp it as well. I think these clamps are going to come in really handy. I'm going to batch out a few more. Well, I'm going to go ahead and back these out pretty much to the maximum. And uh, this is an inch and three quarter wide by half inch thick material. And if uh, everything works out, it should hold this material. Let's say you were going to make a, a face frame out of this. Well, let's see. Clamp that up. That holds. Clamp this up. That holds. There we go. So there's your face frames clamped and ready to be attached. This thing holds really tight. I'm very impressed. So it'll hold down to a minimum of half inch material, which I think is pretty good. Uh, inch and three quarter wide. I, you could always uh, change your clamp to accommodate a wider material if that's what you desire. That's the great thing about shop made clamps. You can customize them to your needs. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I'm really happy how this turned out. Uh, if you guys want that free template, just email me at backyardwoodshop at gmail.com. And in the subject line, just put clamp base template, and I'll know what you mean, and I'll send it right out to you in 24 hours or less. I'm really happy how these turned out. They work even better than I thought they would. Um, this took me a few days to get the design just right. Uh, I had a few fails, and if you stick around till after the video, I'll show you some of those. But I'd like to thank you for watching. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button. And until the next time, I see you in the backyard. Well, here's my first iteration. Uh, I was cutting out this section here because uh, that's kind of the way it was on the Rockler version. But after I started paying attention to that, there's no reason to have that there. It really serves no purpose. So I just left that straight right there. Um, then I used these cams here with a dowel, 3 8 dowel, that... Well, and believe it or not, this holds really well. So you kick that back, and then you can just put some pressure, and boy, I cannot pull that out of there. So, and it's fast, and it works, but um, it's just not as, as quick as having a, a threaded screw. Like, you could do this, and then, boom, I'm done. And then plus, I'm always going to have to have a sacrificial piece that i got to keep with it. And the other thing is, if I flip it upside down, um, my sacrificial piece has always fallen out. So I didn't like that, so I kind of started thinking I'm going to need something different. But I still like the cam idea, so I thought, well, if I screw in a block and let it ride on in these slots... That would, that would solve when I turned it upside down, and then if I used a bolt and nut, that would do it as well. Well, I'm still running into the issue of how much material I can clamp. See, I can't reach it there. Here I can. So I would need a series of holes, and I'd constantly move in this anyway. So I thought, this is just a poor design on my part. You can see there's that cutout I decided not to cut out anymore. 
it has no uh, bearing on this. It's just an aesthetic thing, and I said it didn't need to be. Um, so I, it just was a fail, I think, overall. It does work. You, you get plenty of strength. But see that? See that wood moving? That was another issue I thought. I said, well, you know what? Every time I go to clamp, the wood's wanting to move. That's not good. Now, I could flip this cam the opposite way and cause it to move towards the other piece, but I just didn't like that movement, so I scrapped the cam idea. So these are just a few of the uh, iterations, and here's another piece that I used, the block that I threaded, and that worked fine, so that's when I decided to use the inch and a half threaded block and it was turned out great. Um, this is just a 2x4 here that I sliced up. 